Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. Today's date is July 18th, 2013. It's a Thursday. I'm your host, Rob Dew, and here's a look at some of our top stories. Tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News. Russian war games include simulated attacks against the United States. Then, a domestic drone crash lands in Florida. And a zombie virus is used to scare Boy Scouts about bio-attacks. All that and more coming up on the InfoWars Nightly News. The government climbed on top of my mother, and that's how you got Alex Jones. I am the son of Obama. So we've got Russia doing war exercises. We've got the IRS singling out the Tea Party. And we also have our top story. The state of West Virginia is saying, hey, no false flag here. And this stems from a lot of things that have been going around the internet the last few months. Um, one coming from a guy named uh, David Vanderbeek, who said that he had information there was going to be a false flag at the Jamboree. Well, we reported on that, then he put that on his post, and then he was getting it from government sources. Now, the state of West Virginia, I guess from all the hoopla and all the people calling into public radio stations and TV stations and asking their people what's going on, we have the article now from InfoWars, West Virginia dismisses false flag allegations. West Virginia Public Broadcasting has issued a statement on the community's Beckley's Best Facebook page assuring the public and conspiracy theorists that the National Guard training exercise taking place at the same time and location as the National Boy Scout Jamboree are not indicative of a false flag event. We go now to the West Virginia Public Broadcasting, and they even have a statement from a Major General James Horner, West Virginia's adjunct general, says there's no truth to the rumor that the Guard and Department of Homeland Security plan the training to disguise an attempt by the government to use the Jamboree as a vehicle to expand his power. But it's not just rumors on somebody's Facebook page or on the internet. We also have government documents, things that we take bona fide here at Infowars.com. We have a proclamation that was signed by the governor. Uh, that was of this year, July 2013. Uh, that's going to start from the 14th of July to the 26th. Um, the Jamboree will bring approximately 40,000 youth and adult scout leaders, as well as thousands of visitors to the state of West Virginia. And we move down uh, a little bit more. Whereas, in keeping with the Boy Scout motto, be prepared in preparation for the Jamboree, it is necessary to activate the resources of the West Virginia National Guard and to implement emergency management assistance. Moving on to the uh, second page of this proclamation. Uh, order the implementation of the State Emergency Operations Plan, the activation of the State Emergency Operations Center, and a manner and location to be established by the Director uh, of the Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Management, and the implementation of provisions of Section 6, Article 5, Chapter 15 of the Code of West Virginia. So basically, they're mobilizing their um, emergency management um, apparatus and materials and facilities in order to take into account, you know, the 50,000 plus people that are going to be descending on this remote area of West, West Virginia, and it's near the New River Gorge Bridge. Uh, they bought a site um, near a army base, and we also have an executive order signed by the governor. This, it was done last year in getting preparation for this, and they talk about the Summit Bechtel Family National Scout Reserve, where the, the Boy Scouts are moving their jamboree to. On the third page here, the West Virginia Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Management is hereby designated as principal agency to coordinate all state agency planning and response for activities and events of the Boy Scouts of America at the summit. Going here on the last page, the West Virginia Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Management shall coordinate with key agencies that will have major roles in support of the National Scout Jamboree and shall provide the governor within 60 days of this order a financial impact statement outlining the needs uh, that such agencies will have in order to provide proper support for a successful event. So nothing, nothing innocuous there. They're activating some emergency sources. They're getting a lot of things together. But what's interesting is that these executive orders and proclamations also coincide with several um, exercises that are going on. And I'm going to go to the exercises. Then I want to show you something else that appeared on, a, on the Beckley Facebook page. Now, and this is reported by a local news agency. Uh, you have the Air Guard Exercise Century Storm, an Army Exercise Ridge Runner, and a Disaster Training and Response Exercise that we haven't given a specific name that is going on at the tunnel at Camp Dawson. And that was um, done by a National Guard member who gave us that uh, name, Hoyer. He also expressed the state's main objective is to showcase the state's ability to provide military and national 
security training. According to a news release from the National Guard, training events for Century Storm began on Monday and will run through Friday and will include Air National Guard units from five states and the Army National Guard and Army Reserve units. But all this is taking place in an area where you're going to have about 50,000 Boy Scouts and their dads and other uh, Boy Scoutmasters and auxiliary personnel descending on this mountain. You also have these major military exercises going on. So it could be used as cover for that, which is why you have people speaking out. Now here's another interesting thing that came out. On the Beckley, uh, Beckley's Best Facebook page, there's a public health notice. 2013 National Boy Scout Jamboree at the Summit Bechtel Reserve, uh, July 15th through the 24th, 2013. Down at the bottom it says, local businesses situations to report. Reports of poss possible foodborne illnesses among your customers or guests. Multiple complaints of any similar illnesses by customers or guests. For example, five guests with rashes or four people complaining of vomiting. And if you look at what uh, David Vanderbeek was saying, he was saying it was going to be a communicable disease that was passed around or some kind of bio attack. That was, that's what he was getting from his source. Now we don't know if any of this is, is happening or if it is, has happened. We most assuredly, we have you know, people in that area that we've been in contact with. Uh, they've been talking about lots of helicopters and lots of uh, air, you know, airplanes and stuff flying around the area, lots of army activity, um, setting up you know, tunneling operations going on, all kinds of stuff going on there. I can tell you this, I've been to West Virginia, I've, I've family, my family roots actually come from West Virginia. Uh, many years ago, I was involved in a production at the Greenbrier Hotel, which is maybe about 40 miles east of this area. And this was a location that in the event of a nuclear attack, the entire your president, United States cabinet members were going to be evacuated to this hotel, which has a giant bomb shelter in the basement. So West Virginia being involved in these government operations is not anything new. They've been doing this for a long time. Now, is anything going to happen? Well, here's another interesting thing. This is out of Virginia Tech. Zombie virus to be unleashed at National Boy Scout Jamboree to teach kids about contagious diseases. Okay, there you go. And there it is from the Virginia Tech News. Uh, 50,000 Boy Scouts might just turn into zombies as part of an educational game called Virus Tracker. The data collected by playing Virus Tracker can be used to understand how social contact networks are pathways for transmissions of infectious diseases. Virus Tracker allows participants to use scannable barcodes to infect other players. They'll get points for infecting one another, but they will also strive to become and stay human. From the data collected at the Jamboree, researchers will create an infection tree to show how individual scouts spread zombie viruses within their population. We are very excited about deploying Virus Tracker and other educational applications developed by Network Dynamics and the Simulation Science Laboratory at the forthcoming Boy Scout Jamboree. Not only will the scouts find these applications interesting, but scientists will be able to learn about epidemics in important new ways. And that was from Madif Mareth, the Deputy Director of Laboratory and Professor of Computer Science at the College of Engineering. So you have this exercise going on of a zombie virus. And we've seen the government in many ways, DHS most notably was doing um, zombie outbreaks and per, uh, practicing of mowing down multiple zombies, shooting people in the head, stuff like that, on the name of good, clean fun. Now, what does the Boy Scouts have to do with the Army and, and, all, and DHS and all those other things? Well, back in 2009, the New York Times published an article called Scouts Trained to Fight Terrorists and More, and we've covered this many times. There you had the Boy Scouts with guns. They were training scouts as young as 14 to go and take down um, veterans. They were going on drug drills, base, uh, helping with border agents. And this was all done through the Homeland Security. Well, this was done in 2009, the youngest being a 14. Flat, fast forward four years later, these kids are now 18, are of now of age to participate in these things on a real time span. So what have you got? You've got the Boy Scouts once again doing exercises with the National Guard. I was actually on hand for some of these exercises back in 2010 in Chicago, and we can roll this footage now. The Boy Scouts, and there's some of their uh, shirts, uh, as they were all their troop shirts, uh, they were all at actually being victims of a terrorist attack. They were being used as hostages in a bio situation. Here it is going 
tour. There, there you have the National Guard kicking in the doors as police training. But they were also using Polish soldiers, which we'll see some of that footage later. They kill the two terrorists. Then they order everyone else to get their hands up, get on the ground. There they are forcing them on the ground. And this white powder that you see in the screen, that was supposedly the biological agent which I thought that was very interesting that they're having the people put their hands and faces into the biological agent. Then they would lead them over to areas and count them off. They were shouting orders at them, ordering them to cover their faces. Later on, they go through a whole decontamination procedure. But there we go. There's a patch right there. It says BOA. That is the Bureau of Anti-Terrorism in Poland. That is their actual patch. So these guys were on hand for this exercise. And I have on tape, you can go watch Operation Vigilant Guard um, on the Alex Jones channel, just do a search for that. And we have f officials, emergency management officials in Chicago saying the Polish are only there as observers, they're not participating. Well, there they are participating. They were ordering um, students around at gunpoint, uh, these Boy Scouts, um, using them, guarding them. They're actively participating in these exercises, throwing flashbang grenades and other such things. They were active participants, and for the Chicago emergency management official to lie directly to my face, and I asked him the question twice. I said, are you sure? Because we saw them participating in exercises earlier in, in the day, and he said, oh, no, no, no. They are just merely observers. So that's what you get. You get, there it is, Operation Vigilant Guard, and that was in 2010. It's in several parts, because back then we can only upload uh, 15 minutes of a time up to you, our YouTube channel, but there you can see that's actually Major Lysiak there with one of our Army National Guard units, and they were doing all kinds of things. And at the very end, which is very interesting because we always hear people talk about these crisis actors. Well, our, the last exercise we went was a bio attack at a chemical plant, and it was uh, funny enough, it was the chemical manufacturer that made the dispersant that they used in the BP oil disaster. They made lots of it, and. They had people lined up, they had five, three or, four, well, three or four makeup artists there putting on wounds on people in lots of different areas, fake blood using all this stuff, and then they were put out in various locations, and then they did search and rescue and decontamination exercises with those people. But they had wounds so that they could doctor the wound and, and then bring these people out. But this kind of stuff does exist. They, they do these exercises ongoing. This is nothing new. But it just, it's just an interesting dichotomy of the Boy Scouts being absorbed into the state. And it kind of has to go back to, uh, it goes back to President Obama's remarks at the time where he said we need a civilian national security force just as powerful, just as strong as our military forces to get through uh, with the objectives that they've set, which is mainly go around and be a minder, be a commun set up communist minder brown shirt units, which is where we're going at this point. And so that is definitely something to be on the lookout for. Um, it'll be interesting to see if anything happens or if anything doesn't happen. One thing is for certain, uh, InfoWars has done its due diligence looking at this situation. We've brought out all the facts that we've seen at this point, the government documents, the proclamations by different public officials. So now it's w waiting to see what will happen. If there was anything planned, I think by us shining light on it and others out there, they probably will have backed down on any plans. So let's hope nothing happens because the Boy Scouts is... I think a, a good organization, I was an Eagle Scout actually, so I, I went through the whole thing many years and I learned a lot. I learned a lot about how to take care of myself and how to be an asset instead of a liability. That was one thing we always talked about, is by learning different skills, whether it's first aid or how to read a compass or how to build a fire, you want to be an asset to your group, not a liability. And uh, so that's all we're going to say on that. We'll see what happens. Moving on to drone news, Air Force drone crash closes remote Florida highway. And this is out of the AP, Air Force closed Highway 98 west of Panama City and east of Mexico Beach because of possible fires from a crash of a drone. Officials said the drone has a limited 24-hour battery life and will be inactive after the battery was depleted. So we don't have that many drones flying the skies and we've already got them crashing. But by the year 2020, just a mere seven years away, CNS News reported back in March that the FAA predicts 10,000 drones are going to be in the skies by that time. So they are making plans to have 10,000 of these drones flying overhead, and you could rest assured there will be many more drone crashes, hopefully not in populated areas, but we know that's going to be the case because that's where the drones are going to be flying. They're going to be flying in populated areas, and last uh, it was two weeks ago, we brought uh, you the story where we had the 
what looked like an unmanned drone craft or a spy craft in, in, uh, from the Air Force in E6 that was flying around really low next to the buildings in Austin, Texas, doing touch-and-go landings off the Austin airport. And then we go to the website uh, from the local newscast, and they show a picture of the plane, but then they added in the date stamp, which Jakari Jackson pointed out. You could see the two different uh, layers there where, and if y'all can bring that up, that would be really interesting to see. Here it is off the KXAN website. You can see the picture of the plane, and then we're going to zoom into that, and you can actually see, scroll up a little bit. There you go. You can see exactly where they cut and pasted the 7-3-2013 timestamp on it to make it look like they were creating a legitimate piece of news and that somebody took that picture that day. And they didn't do that. That's not the case. So there's another case of the media just lying to you like it's no big deal. Uh, moving on. Here's a Paul Joseph Watson article that was on InfoWars today. Russian war games response to simulated U.S. attack. The war games, which involved 130 combat aircraft, 70 ships, 5,000 tanks, 160,000 troops, and 320 tons of equipment, took place in Russia's far east near the border with China. The drill was a result of a snap order given by Vladimir Putin on Friday, which tasked the Russian military to achieve full combat readiness in a short time. And it had to do with an invasion by, a joint invasion by Japanese and U.S. forces. So these guys are getting ready for World War III, most likely in response if we start sending troops into Syria. Well, I guess if we send troops in the light, and we've already got troops in there undercover, but if we go into a proxy war with Russia, it could lead to World War III, but we're all worried about Trayvon Martin and the George Zimmerman verdict and the race war, which is starting to be er erupting from that. Let's go to an IRS story. This is out of CNS News. IRS employees ordered to send Tea Party cases to IRS's only Obama political employee em appointee. IRS employees were ordered by their superiors, including Lotus Lois Lerner, who was the lady who got up there and took the Fifth Amendment, who pleaded the fifth against self-incrimination to send certain Tea Party tax-exempt applications to the office of the IRS chief counsel, which was headed by William Wilkins, who at the time was the only Obama political appointee at the IRS. And they went up and said, oh, no, 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 we were never interested in doing that to Tea Party groups. We just wanted to look at these applications closely, but they were going to a direct political appointee. This has obvious... Um, ramifications with that election that took place in 2009 and 10 where you had these Tea Party groups not getting their nonprofit status therefore they couldn't do certain funding things that other left groups were doing so there we have it we've got the proof and uh, we're gonna go to a special report now it kinda has to do with this IRS scandal It has to do with the government uh, people wanted to do away with their government at this point there's a lot of people that have been telling saying they want to get rid of the IRS a lot of government officials a lot of politicians, especially on the right. Well, Colorado, specifically North uh, Eastern Colorado, is looking to succeed, secede from the rest of Colorado, forming its own state. And they have a lot of different reasons for wanting to do it. And Gigi Arnett has got this report. Last month, InfoWars reported on the possible secession of Weld County from Colorado to form its own state of North Colorado. The idea of putting this on the ballot came from intrusive new regulations being placed on rural parts of Colorado. Here's a clip from my interview with Commissioner Mike Freeman. You guys are looking at forming another state, North Colorado, perhaps. It's a conversation that we've had with a number of other counties. Um, and, you know, and there's a lot of issues that come into this as to the reasons why we're, why we're considering doing this. But we would be doing this um, along with, with other counties, and, and it has nothing to do with whether we're home rule or statutory. What started this? Well, I think there's a number of things that started it. I think probably it's been, it's been coming even for several years, but the commissioners went to the governor and um, asked for a, if they could um, get a... Get a uh, 30-day stay on the wells, on all these wells that have been shut down in the South Platte to um, not turn them back on permanently, but turn them back on for 30 days to allow um, farmers to be able to save their crops, and, and they were turned down by that. And so that kind of started it, and then as we got into this legislative session, I think that it, that it started probably with the gun laws that were passed. I think it went on from there with the, you know, the attack on oil and gas, and that's extremely important to what's going on in Weld County. 
And I think the thing that culminated it was the was Senate Bill 252, which was passed by the legislature and signed by the governor, which is an alternative energy bill. Ten counties met in the town of Akron, Colorado, to begin mapping the boundaries for the new state of North Colorado. I say 80% of the oil and gas revenue in the state of Colorado is coming out of northeastern Colorado. Weld, Yuma County, and some of the other counties, Commissioner Sean Conway said. One of the immediate issues that would have to be addressed are the water rights between the newly formed state and Colorado. After all the local legalities are addressed, then the Colorado General Assembly and the U.S. Congress have to approve the secession. Check out Strategic Relocation, a documentary film featuring Joel Skousen, and learn all the safe places your family can retreat. Check out the film at InfoWarsShop.com. I'm Gigi Arnetta with an InfoWars Nightly News Alert. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in Colorado over this. Will we have Northern Colorado, a 51st state of the union? And what'll be even more interesting to see is will they still allow the legalization of marijuana in that part of Northern Colorado um, in association or in disassociation with the rest of Colorado? Now I wanna go to a final piece of news and let me tell you, this broke my heart reading this today and it's only because I finally saw it on mainstream media that I can actually believe it because the rumors have been circulating for years that wrestling and professional wrestling is fixed. And this is out of the London Telegraph, WWE embarrassed as wrestling match outcomes leaked online. And the only reason we can, are now allowed to believe this is that it came from the mainstream media. You know, it, it didn't matter that we told you for years and years that the NSA was spying on you. Now that the mainstream media has leaked it through a credible source like Edward Snowden, now you're allowed to believe it. Well, for years people have been saying that wrestling's fake, wrestling's fake, wrestling's fake. Well, now that the Telegraph has reported on it, you can now believe it. Now that it has come out in the mainstream media, you are now allowed to have those thoughts that the government may not be all-powerful. You can now question. You're now allowed to do it. Now that the mainstream media has told you that, just remember that. We here at the Alternative Media are a little different. We actually come out with stuff before it's on mainstream media news, usually months before, showing you things that are happening. And they finally catch up with us when because when what happens is they see the feedback loop going on on the blogosphere, and they're like, oh, wow, this might be a story. Well, when we've already reported on it, like the 1.6 billion bullets that nobody wanted to talk about, and now we're having congressional investigations. You can help us by becoming members of Prison Planet TV. That helps us fund our operation here, puts TVs around us, cameras in front of us, and lets us bring you all the different things. Look, we have the new movie, State of Mind, which you can go on and watch right now for free. We hope that you support the filmmakers and get a copy of State of Mind, which is available at InfoWarsStore.com or InfoWarsShop.com. You can get it in DVD or Blu-ray. Support the filmmakers, have screenings in your area, make copies, give them out for free. Really do anything you can at this point to wake people up because if we wait for the mainstream media to do it, they're going to wait several years down the line to finally say, listen, the game is rigged. You've all been fooled. We've been telling you that for years and we're trying to give you the tools to go out there and deprogram the other sheep, the other zombies out there. So please help us out. Become a member of PrisonPlanet.tv. We're going to go to break and when we come back, we're going to have two different filmmakers from the Paul Revere contest. Two different types of films, but all with the same message of freedom and liberty. And we'll be right back after this message. Now you can watch the InfoWars Nightly News streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show. Are we choosing our own paths, our own destiny, or has it been pre-selected for us? C.S. Lewis said, when training beats education, civilization dies. We need to always be cognizant of, as a free society, that information can be used as a weapon. Barrier to discovery is not ignorance. It's the illusion of knowledge. We are seen as nothing but biological androids. To gain control of education in America, not for a philanthropic purpose, but to change the thinking of the American people. From the time we're very young, we're taught to, you know, worship authority basically because that's our key to survival as young children. Discover the history, the present, and the future of mind control. From compulsory state education to the Hollywood media brainwashing machine, 
We are kept in perpetual bondage to the ideas that shape our actions. And the CIA scientists could actually film people who had been surreptitiously dosed with LSD. There's a brain entrainment process that takes place. That gives the government free reign to create whatever story or narrative it wants to create. Whatever the public face of something is, whatever they're talking about publicly, there's something else over here they're probably not looking at. How to engineer the opinion of the American people so that they would fully endorse, not only endorse, but demand a war. When you watch mainline establishment television, you are putting yourself in front of the barrel of a gun. Discover the history, the present, and the future of mind control, psychological warfare, brainwashing. Are we controlled and manipulated? You bet. That's mind control par excellence. Find out how deep the rabbit hole really goes with this new groundbreaking documentary film, State of Mind. Available exclusively at InfoWars.com. Because there's a war on for your mind. That has been our motto here at InfoWars for my 18 years of battle against the globalist. And now we see the open announcements of global, private, corporate tyranny over our governments. That's what the New World Order is. It's an unaccountable private combine of organized crime engaged in corporate takeovers of nation states. And the conscious attempt to abolish basic rights and fundamental liberties. Infowars.com is not just leading the charge against this here in the U.S. or North America. We are leading the charge worldwide. And that's because our listeners, our viewers, our supporters, fellow freedom lovers like you across the planet resonate with our message of liberty and telling it like it is. And that's why for the last two years especially, I have thrown everything I've got, my time, my energy, our backup capital, everything into really trying to awaken the sleeping giant that is humanity. And that's why the July issue that just came in a few days ago is so important. We've already sold about half the stock we have of it at cost in groups of 10 up to 100 in bulk. It covers the entire NSA spy grid, how it ties in worldwide, how it's not about stopping terrorists, but about suppressing and dominating and controlling the free press and political opposition. And in this magazine, we don't just have three free bumper stickers like I did a few months ago. We have 10 bumper stickers, four full-size ones with amazing messages guaranteed to get people thinking like America has been occupied by globalist forces, InfoWars.com. Listen to Alex Jones at InfoWars.com. InfoWars.com, forbidden information. Listen to Alex Jones, InfoWars.com. And then on top of it, six medium-sized bumper stickers with the message as well. These are key to post in legal and lawful areas on your book bag, your computer, your car, or to give friends and family. I have printed 500,000 of these bumper stickers. Only half of this month's run of magazines has them. So when you purchase them in bulk or you're a 12-month subscriber, you will get the special issue. And I can't afford to do this every month, so it's going to be quite a while until we do this again. Please take advantage of this. Buy them in bulk and give them to your friends and family and encourage them to get these bumper stickers out because with 500,000 stickers, we can reach tens of millions of people with the message of truth. They want to collectivize us. They want to bankrupt us. They want to drive us into their arms to control us. They want to dumb us down. But the sleeping giant that is for humanity is awakening. So I want to thank you all for your support. I want to encourage everybody to go to InfoWarsStore.com and to get a 12-month subscription or to give a gift subscription. Imagine 12 of these coming to your friends or family's door to wake them up. Or to give a gift subscription to the local police department or your local congressman or woman. This is how we're going to affect change, voting with our dollars and voting with our time. Again, visit InfoWarsStore.com today to subscribe, to get the magazine in bulk, or to give a gift subscription, or to give yourself a subscription to wake up friends and family. I am all in. 
I am committed 110% to not mince words and to not back off and to boldly confront the globalist. So I want to thank all of you that have supported us in the past, and I want to encourage all of you out there who may be on the fence that know this information is true but have been scared to take action. You had better be scared of not taking action and letting this monstrous system come to fruition. Now is the time to commit. Now is the time to say which side of history you're on. Now is the time to stand against the globalist and the new world order. And regardless of whether you get this July issue, this July 4th resistance to tyrants issue, spread the word about liberty, resist corruption in your area. Millions of us doing little things can move mountains together. I'm Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars.com and the InfoWars team. Welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Rob Dew. Our next guest is one of the filmmakers featured in our Operation Paul Revere contest, and you can find all these films that we have listed. It's not the entire list, but it's a great selection of them, and we will have a full list posted very soon at InfoWars.com forward slash Paul. You can find all the great video. Man, there's some great videos in there, let me tell you. But this one's called A Healthy Distrust. We're just going to play a segment, and then we're going to have the filmmaker here, the director, Mike Ademski, from Liberty Luncheon. That's his YouTube channel. And so we're going to watch this clip real quick. It's just the intro to it, but it really does draw you in. You're really going to want to watch the rest of the 23-minute film. So here we go. You can honestly see that most of our rights are just going yeah, out. Yeah, they, the they're just Everything leaving is... sooner or later. We're not going to have any rights. Like, yeah. The federal government's onslaught on our personal civil liberties and civil rights um, is absolutely a bipartisan affair. There is complete continuity from the Bush administration to the Obama administration. That sounds like a crazy conspiracy theory to me. I don't know. Meanwhile, there are new disturbing developments out of Washington tonight regarding the president's belief that he has the legal authority to assassinate U.S. citizens. Three Americans now have been on the list, they've been assassinated, but they don't talk about the second one because the second one happened to be a 16-year-old son of a law king. You're not even to acknowledge the drone program. You're not even to discuss that it exists. You know what? As long as it's our team that's in office, I feel a little more secure than if it's the Republicans in office. The Department of Homeland Security is apparently on a huge ammo buying spree. It comes out to like 1.6 billion rounds of ammunition. Staggering pile of 1.6 billion rounds. The time has come, America, to step up and ban these weapons. We will not disarm, we will not comply, and we will resist. 1776 will commence again if you try to take our firearms. Doesn't matter how many lemmings you get out there on the street begging for them to have their guns taken. We will not really... Few of them are doing it for the salary, and all of them will say they're doing it to serve the public. But there are other benefits, power, prestige, and the opportunity to become a Washington insider with access to information and connections that no one else has in an environment of privilege where rules that govern the rest of the country don't always apply to them. You've given me the perfect example to give you my circle of life scenario, and that a lot of people ask this, like, what is the nature of government? When the United States government was created and the Constitution was written, that was the absolute most freedom this place has ever experienced in its life, or probably in the world. And from that moment on, a little bit was taken, a little more freedom was taken, a little more freedom was taken, a little more freedom was taken, da 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 this is this. And then you come down to like, it's 50-50, and this is probably during the industrial boom, where like, businesses were still able to thrive, one parent could work, children and stuff, and then all of a sudden, more and more and more, and you're about 75% right around 9-11, NDAA, all this stuff starts kicking in, and by the time it comes around full circle, it's full bore, and all that's gonna happen is, we're gonna boom, bust, get rid of this government, and start a new one and go in a circle. Well, you see a tendency in government to concentrate power in fewer hands, and, and that's the effect, but that's not really fully an explanation of the mechanism or, or what government really is as, as a racket, as a protection racket, because they rely on the consent of the people. Well, government gets its power from the people, we the people. 
it's not a uh, it's not the government on top and we're on the bottom it's actually the reverse our government was formed under the idea that the people control the government through their participation when you stop participating in your government outside forces come in and take control any power that the government claims to have that power comes directly from the people people like you and me but the moment you remove your consent you put that power back where it properly rests with the people and that was just the first minute and a half of what I think is a really good, really powerful film, outstanding even, of uh, a healthy distrust. And it is in, featured in the Paul Revere contest that we're having right now. We'll be announcing the, uh, a large pool of finalists on Monday. And then if you go to Infowars.com forward slash P or Infowars.com uh, forward slash Paul Revere, you can see all the films that we have featured. That's not even, that's not all the entries, but those are the ones that you know we felt are, are really you know standing out from the pack. We are going to have a full list that we're going to post on Planet Info Wars, and this is something that we want to happen for you know people to come back and look at these for years to come, and really get a sense of what's going on in the freedom movement. Um, and Liberty L, the channel that put out a healthy distrust, it's manned by Mike Ademski, and he's a director who basically, you know, he works a 40 hour a week job, he does this in his spare time. And let me tell you, you know, good editing can, you know, really tell a story and make you, you know, really get, convey information, but outstanding, great editing, that is something that's really gonna push you over the edge and really get, affect you emotionally. And that is what this, this uh, film that he's put together has done. It's 23 minutes long, it's outstanding. I just watched it again right before we're we're doing this interview, and let me tell you, it he, the way he he cuts the clips together, uh, the interviews that he shot, it, it's a seamless story, talking about the different types of attitudes that are out there in America. Uh, the one shot there was a lady who was saying, "Oh, I feel more comfortable that my team is in," you know, and I mean, it just blows me away that some people still think that you know if their team is in that everything's gonna be okay so we turn now without further ado to director Mike Ademski who is joining us from Springfield Massachusetts and uh, how you doing today Mike good thanks for having me yeah well let me tell you I, I thought your video was great you did a really good job at it what got you uh, what what I guess what prompted you to get into the contest and then how did you pick your subject how did you go about collecting all the clips? I mean, you did a monstrous job here to put all these things together and, and just tell a seamless tale. Um, well, like a year, year and a half ago or whatever, you guys announced that reporter contest, and I wanted to enter, but you know, I made up excuses or whatever. I didn't end up doing it, and I kind of regretted it. So when you guys announced uh, the film contest, you know, I've always been saying for a long time now that I would make my own film one of these days, and I'll make a documentary exposing this and that, but I never really had the impetus to make it happen. You know, I didn't have a camera or nothing, so I floated the idea to my buddy Shane, who uh, he appears in the film, and uh, incidentally, I met him through the Planet Infowars site that you guys got, and um, so we decided to go in on it, so we split the camera, we started, and we were just floating around some ideas. Um, originally, it was just going to be kind of like a music video, kind of showcasing some songs from a buddy of mine, but uh, it kind of just evolved from there, and um, we just wanted to we wanted to show like the different opinions that are out there in America right now. We wanted to, I kind of wanted to make make it so that people felt comfortable. People that are on the fence, people that are not sure exactly what it is that they believe, they'll feel comfortable in the fact that there's plenty of people out there that share their distrust of the government, that they're not actually alone. And uh, to show that people are always out there, they're always fighting for their rights like on a, on a daily basis, and to show that it's something that's worth fighting for, you know? And it's not a glamorous thing either, going out and fighting for your rights. You know, Larry Pratt's out there underneath a tarp in the rain, you know, trying to get people jazzed up about the Second Amendment and why they need it. Stuart Rhodes is out there talking to people. These guys are really on the grassroots going out and, and talking to the people on, in the streets, trying to get them, you know, to stand up and, and get awake, you know, wake people up. And that's what, I, you know, I thought was great. You had those guys in there. You feature uh, the Kraken as well. He has a few comments, uh, Dan Bedondi, and that was right after uh, all that took place during the Boston Marathon, and he was standing up to, you know, high-ranking government officials, standing up to him and asking him about false flags, asking him about other pictures. He did not take no for an answer. He did not sit down. And, uh, but, you know, you have a lot of guys in there. You have Adam Kokesh. Uh, who are some of the other uh, prominent people that you have featured? Uh, well, we open up with Adamo Freeman from coplock.org. 
Uh, he's up in New Hampshire. He it's basically a police accountability uh, website. It's it's similar to to We Are Change, but it's completely decentralized, and they just have chapters all over the country. You just have people, you know, filming police. Any any kind of police interactions, they film it, and then they they catch them in uh, these corruption stings, and they catch them in their abuses of power and whatnot. We also have uh, I spoke with. Uh, Kate Crockford from the ACLU. She's a privacy rights coordinator up here in Boston. Um, you know that that interview alone that was that was probably like 45 minutes long, and I only maybe had like you know four or five minutes tops of her in there. But we covered stuff about license plate scanners that just came out in the news the other day. Mm-hmm. Um, we talked about you know COINTELPRO, uh, you know Hoover's people targeting like the original Black Panther parties with Larry Pickney and whatnot. Right. Um, so I want to get like the full raw interviews up there. It's just I don't having like technical difficulties with my computer. Well, and that is the curse of shooting lots of interview footage. You have, you know, we shoot these interviews, you know, that are like an hour, two hours long. Um, you know, people like Russell Means. Uh, he's finally going into this new Obama deception film. We shot an interview with him uh, over two years ago. Now it's coming up on three years. And uh, he's even he's no longer with us, but he really sat down with us, gave us the time. We went out to Wounded Knee. He talked about the uh, original massacre that took place, and then the standoff that took place in the 70s. And you know, he just really lays it out. But he's probably only going to be in the film for three minutes, you know. And it's a shame because he's got so much great knowledge. But there's so much stuff going on, and so many other people that we have. I I, I can feel your pain there with trying to figure out what clips go where. But I think you did an outstanding job and just seamlessly weaving all these together and I guess you're, there's some spots where you're in the film too where you kinda you know help the momentum transition to, to certain subjects but you really hit you know you hit second amendment you hit government you know corruption in general uh... what are a couple of the other subjects that you hit on, on hit on in your film yeah we talked about the gun rights we open up though with the question you know like in the background it's got the panning out shot of lincoln and uh... Adamo says you know like a lot of people ask me what is the nature of government and that's really at the heart of all of this is that we need to, you know, people are always bickering, like, should government be small? Should government be big? Should they do these foreign wars? Should be, you know, drug policies, so on and so forth. But nobody ever gets to the heart of the question, which what is the purpose of government? What is there? What is, what is its role? What is it supposed to be doing? What is its uh, relationship to the people? And uh, if you can answer that question Honestly, if you can get to the truth of the matter, then everything else is a breeze after that because then you know what you're already working with. And so it becomes convoluted, you know? Right, and you provided an answer from Bloomberg. who <laughs> says it's, it's the government's job to tell us when we're doing something wrong. <laughs> In yeah, their eyes, guy's... what they think is wrong. I mean, totally ridiculous. You know, the guy's banning soft drinks, uh, salt. And, you know, but not worried about people protecting themselves. And, um, you know, let, let's go, uh, you know, the, uh, I want to talk about Zimmerman a little bit. And I'm just springing this on you. What, what was your interpretation of what's going on now, especially with all these protests? What do you think about everything that's going on in the light of this verdict? Well, actually, I'm glad you, you asked that because I was thinking about it today. Um, you know, like, first off, I agree with your guys' analysis that Zimmerman was wrong to be, you know, following this guy. And Alex said the other day, like, Having your car busted into is not worth killing a person, you know? Right. I mean, if there's great bodily harm, then sure, you know? But I think we need to really address the, the real issues that are at play here because we know, people in the Liberty Camp, we know that the world is actually pretty simple, but it's very intricate. There's a lot of different um, pieces that you need to put together. And so my analysis of it is that they're attacking us on multiple fronts. So when they're going after Zimmerman, number one, they're calling him white when he's not. So they're trying to provoke racial tensions that didn't exist prior to any of this, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Number two, uh, they're going to use that, the racial tensions, to, as an excuse to crack down and um, to use all of these, these domestic uh, drones, all of the, the MRAP tanks that Stuart Rhodes was talking about, the bullets and the, the machine guns, all that. Now they have a pretext to use it. Um, uh, the other, what was the other well, let me tell you this. If Zimmerman's white, Barack Obama's white, because Barack's mama is white, First of all, Zimmerman's dad's white, but his mom's from Peru. So if we're going to call Zimmerman white, let's call Barack Obama white, too. Let's just keep it all on the same page and keep it all equal, like, like the uh, MSNBC pundits like to say. But go on. Continue with what you were talking about. Yeah, well, then the other thing, too, is that the, the whole Second Amendment deal, because basically what they're saying is you don't have a right to self-defense. Right. You know, and um, I mean, police all the time, if, if, if an attacker is coming at you as a police officer, you know, and he's, you know, wielding a knife or a gun or whatever. You shoot him and you shoot him dead and they teach you. Shoot him in the head, kill him, you know. And 
be done with the threat. And when that happens, there's no recourse for the family. You know, not that there should be or anything. If somebody's hopped up on PCP and tries to kill a cop and he shoots them dead, that's that's the end of the story. But as a civilian, if some drugged up guy comes after me with a knife and I shoot him dead, I got to worry about civil civil suits. I got to worry about the prosecutor trying to charge me with murder. I got to worry how uh, in Massachusetts if I get my license taken away, they're gonna they're gonna confiscate all my guns. You know, I don't have recourse. So ultimately, what it comes down to is they're saying that. You know, call the police. Let the police handle it. Let the government handle it. It's, this is not your business to be defending yourself at all. Right. They want us to be disarmed. They want to be the only ones with guns. And during the Zimmerman trial, four little kids were killed in Chicago. And nobody's getting all hopped up about that. Nobody's worried about that. And Chicago is one of the places with the most gun laws. And I think it's coincidence that they have more murders now than any other place in the United States at this point, starting you know from this year and even into last year, because they have the most restrictive gun laws and because people aren't allowed to defend themselves and criminals are going to break the law anyway. They don't care. And, and you can't get that through the mind of the politician, even though they know it's true, because they all walk around with guns. Of course they know it's true. And why, why else would they live in gated communities, you know? It's not, it's not as if these politicians that are talking about gun control are going and living in, in Harlem, you know, in, like, in the boroughs or whatever. It's, they go into the gated communities, and they have their guards, and they, they know they, they need to do that because they need to stay safe, you know? And speaking from here in Massachusetts, Massachusetts is basically, you know, the, the stepchild of California and Chicago. I mean, they're, they're gangsters over here just as much as in Chicago and California. And, I mean horribly restrictive gun laws in boston if you want to get uh, a license to carry which you need as a prerequisite to not only possess but to buy firearms you're talking about maybe a year you could wait a year before they even get back to you and by law it's only supposed to take i think like two months or something like that so they're already violating their own laws on a regular basis well and they're trying to take something that should be a right and turn it into a privilege is what they do with basically anything out there whether it's getting a license getting a firearm, opening a business. They want everything regulated so they can put their paws into it and then take it, their little chunk off the top. And, exactly. and, then, and then going, well, hey, we could take this privilege away at any time by, by making you get a license to do it. You know, they want you to have that privilege. Um, and also here, yeah, go ahead. I, can I just say this? Is yeah. that they're always talking about they want reasonable gun restrictions. They all, it's always about sensibility. They want to help the children and whatnot. Here in Massachusetts, uh, David Paul Linsky, okay, he, from Natick, he's trying to pass this bill that would say that any assault weapon, like an AK or an AR, even if it complies with the Massachusetts assault weapons ban, you need to put it in a locked container at a, at a, at a pre-approved uh, 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 gun shop or um, uh, gun range, right? You can't have it in your home. On top of that, you need to buy liability insurance if you even own a gun. So they're become, it's becoming so onerous, and it's becoming so obvious to the gun owners because they're all getting up in masses now, especially here in Massachusetts, which you would not expect from such a liberal state. But they're showing that they're not talking about preventing gun violence. They want to prevent gun ownership. That's what they're really getting at. And that's a lot of laws that you see in Europe. They'll say, yes, you can have a shotgun, you can have a rifle, but it has to stay locked up at a shooting range. You can't keep it in your home. And if somebody breaks in to kill you and you happen to pull out a gun and shoot him, well, we're going to go after you because, you know, we have to protect the criminals at all costs because we need criminals out there preying on people so we can have more cops to catch you and doing other things and get more money into the system. That's the slippery slope it goes down. Yeah. Um, and, you know... Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I mean, is there anything else that you want to add with, uh, you know, talking about your film, uh, Healthy Distrust, which is, um, you can see it right now on our uh, Paul Revere website, Infowars.com forward slash Paul. I mean, what, what was your, in, you know, if you could sum up your message in, uh, in three minutes, or not, give it a minute, and you sum up your message of your film in one minute, what would it be? Um, I would say that the title says it all. It's a healthy distrust. We're distrustful of the government for good reasons. We're distrustful because of the Tuskegee trials. We're distrustful because after Fukushima, they went ahead and just bureaucratically raised the, uh, the radiation levels by tens of thousands of percentage points. And you're seeing like the fruit coming out of Fukushima and it looks like some mutant Ninja Turtles or something, you know? Uh, we're, we're distrustful because the same people that are telling us that we need to turn in our guns to be safe are the ones that are arming Mexican drug cartels and then allowing them to ship drugs into the country to the very cities that are plagued with gun violence. And now they're having horrible epidemics of, of crime and drug use. So we're distrustful, but it's for good reasons. We're not tinfoil hat people who are all, our, our only communication with the world is through CB radios or something. You know, like, we know what's going on. We're distrustful of you, and we have good reasons for it, and we want to be heard. 
Exactly. And, it, and it's a message, you know, of the people distrusting their government. It's not the media saying we should be distrustful of the government. The media keeps telling us we should trust the government, and they laugh when anybody questions anything about the government. Even, you know, I was watching a uh, clip on The Five where they were making fun of these people who were outside saying, you know, free Joe Har. Or at least give him a fair trial. I mean, uh, Rolling Stones already accused him, or already convicted him of being the bomber. They put it up on, on their cover that this guy's the bomber, even though he's pleaded not guilty. There's video footage of him saying, I didn't do it. His brothers reportedly talked to the FBI before they even put their pictures up. And they said, uh, well, he told this to his mother, they said, hey, we can't find these bombers. And he said, well, that's your problem. And then they put their photos on, on the TV, pretending like they don't even know who these guys are. That's how you know it's a lie right off the top. Pretending like they didn't know these guys after they had them under investigation, after they have, at least the older brother has CIA contacts, the uncle has CIA contacts, the mother was under investigation by the FBI. There's just too many strings attaching them to the government apparatus somehow. And so they were probably involved in a drill. They were probably going down there to meet somebody. Hey, bring a backpack. We're going to have stuff for you. And, you know, then, then all of a sudden things just start blowing up. And who knows who was doing that? I mean, we have plenty of pictures of other people with backpacks there on that day. Black backpacks, too, not just gray ones, as uh, the younger brother had. Um, are you excited about the contest? Oh, yeah, totally excited. I mean, there's a lot of really, really good entries. I was watching one the other day, uh, like Illuminati has infiltrated the, the entertainment industry. And it's like, you know, I was thinking about when I saw that, because back in the day, you'd hear people say, you know, Black Sabbath, uh, Iron Maiden, Led Zeppelin, these guys are, you know, devil worshippers or whatever. Right. And I guess, like, if you look into, like, their lyrics, you can say, okay, maybe, like, they're a little bit shady or whatever. But nowadays, man, you're talking, you, you go watch any Lady Gaga video, she's got inverted crosses, inverted pentagrams. She's all seeing ro eyes. Rosary. Yeah, all seeing eyes, rosary beads pulling out of her mouth, you mm -hmm. know, like, these orgies all over the place, and you have uh, goat's heads everywhere, and it's just, Blood, they're like they're like bathing in blood all the time, and it's like the most obvious stuff, and people have no freaking clue that what's going on. Right, and that starts off with a great uh, quote from, uh, I guess, a clip from a Dave Chappelle interview where he's like, "Look, we're not doing this because we're weak people. You know, people aren't doing these crazy things. There's something going on in this system that is turning these people crazy, because you don't get a hundred million dollar contract for, for being a weak person, then you start taking off your clothes on TV." He's referring to. Mariah Carey. I mean, these people are under some sort of brainwashing, under some sort of mind control at some point to get these points across, or they're willing participants into the satanic Illuminati occultism that they practice. I mean, and it's really disturbing. And yeah, I know exactly the video you're talking about. I was watching it the other day, too. And I mean, it is just blatantly in your face, but these young kids don't even realize it because they haven't, they're not worldly enough to see what's being put in front of them. So they just accept it. They accept it yeah. as being normal. So five years from now, it's normal, you know, to go go out and, and, and take your firstborn and cut them up in the street. I mean, that's that's normal. We saw it on a music video. You know, MTV said it was okay, and I, I think that's where you know that's that's where we're getting at in this society. It's just total societal degradation, and it happens through a lot through the entertainment industry. Yeah, well, they need to destroy us culturally first before they can bring us down as a economic or military superpower. You know? Exactly. If we're all running around just you know, chasing the latest craze, we're not worried about foreign entanglements or you know, t t being taxed to the hilt or the government running amok, buying a bunch of bullets. You know, we're not worried about that because we're worried about getting drunk and, and looking at the next video on YouTube, which is why we put our stuff up on YouTube. So hopefully people who are in that brain damaged state you know, click on some. Oh, that looks cool. Oh, wow. Wait, wait a minute. I'm, oh my God, it's not this isn't I'm how thinking, society is. Oh my, well, what's going on? You know, and that's and, and that's why I think this contest is so great. It is a lot bigger, and I, th I thought we maybe get 100, 200 entries. We got over 600 entries in this thing, and it truly amazing. My hats off to everybody who participated, even the people who put together just a simple slideshow, even the people who just stood in front of a camera and talked. It's all about taking that first step into it. And yeah, you know, there's only going to be three prize winners, but everybody won by getting the information out. Every view out there is, you know, possibly another mind that's been unlocked, and that's what we look forward to, and that's why we put this contest on, because we know it's going to wake people up. Yeah, and, you know, there's, and it was like on the last day, in the last couple hours, it was, it was like flooded with nothing but like super high quality production works. I mean, there, there's a lot of good stuff. The guy that did the, uh, the uh, Illinois concealed carry video, that was 
that was really great you know yeah I mean, they're fighting they're fighting just as hard as we are here in massachusetts you know it's just total yeah, you know. It's a continuous fight, and it's a fight that we can't stop, which is why we do these things periodically, these contests, to get people out there and get them active. And I know, yeah, the money is a good thing, and whoever wins is, is going to be really happy. But even those who don't win, we're going to be looking at people who are good editors, who are good camera people, who are good storytellers, and bring them into the fold and start working on more projects. Alex is really serious about just turning out film after film every two to three months, having you know a person here leading a team of people across across the, uh, the country, even across the world, because we now have the technology to do that. We have the capabilities where you could go out and shoot stuff in your area and somebody else could be editing it the next day and then somebody else could be adding their voice over to it and somebody else is making the music and we just keep putting out jewel after jewel after jewel where you know, people just can't ignore the truth after a while because it's like it's Stuart Rhodes said, it's that one drop of truth could dilute a whole bucket of bull and that, that's one of the clips you had in your video. Yeah, and I think that's that's probably like the real prize of this whole thing is you know to get to work on that full time. I mean, like if people look at my video, I mean I'm already working like 60 hours a week at two jobs, you know. And when I did that, when I the bulk of this was shot in like a weekend, you know. So I took off on a Thursday night. I mean I worked all all Thursday into into Friday morning. Took off at 2 a.m. Friday morning for D.C. Spent all D.C. All day in D.C. on Friday, bullhorning the White House. You know that didn't even make it into the into the video. And then Saturday, I, I shot up to Philadelphia to interview Kokesh. Came back home, went up to New Hampshire. You know, so I, I was sacrificing any free time that I had. And that's what people need to start doing. Like if you're on the fence and you're not sure about the information, then you need to make a decision. It, are what we're saying is is what we're saying right or wrong? And then go from there. But if we're right. And you know we're right. Then you need to start getting off the couch, and you got to go out and do something. You got to stop pretending as if you know little things that you do make make no impact. But it's all about everybody doing doing their own part, and we can move mountains. Exactly. And and what I like about that is it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, it doesn't have to go. You don't have to have everything lined up, the perfect flyer, the perfect bumper sticker, or, or the perfect video. It's just going out and doing something. Uh, I remember when we had the reporter contest, Dan Badandi, his first video that he sent in, he's standing in front of a concrete st uh, statue structure, I guess it was a, a, a mausoleum to gun control, and it had a bunch of guns encased in it. And he's standing there talking about how it's dis disgusting that this New World Order monument's in his area, and he starts rattling off the Second Amendment. I'm like, man, this guy knows what he's talking about. It's not the perfect delivery, it's not the perfect package, but he's getting you in, and he's getting you thinking on the the Second Amendment and what it means, and that these people really do want to take all our guns and encase them in concrete, so then they can tell us what to do and treat us as slaves. Yeah, and that's not a lie, man. Eventually, you know, they're going to get some of the guns for sure, and they're going to make they're going to make one big final push. I don't know when it's going to be exactly, but I mean that's that's coming. And all the people that are saying, you know, you're crazy for stocking up on guns and ammo because government's coming for them. You guys are crazy or whatever. You know what? I listened to Alex a couple years ago when he was saying, you know, the signs are coming for the false flags, and I looked into it, and I said, the programming's there. They're priming the pump. They're getting ready. They're going to shoot up some kids. They're going to blow up some schools. They're going to do something, and then they're going to come for the guns. And so I went out, and I got, I got some guns. I got my license. I bought some guns, and then Sandy Hook happens, and nobody can get them. You know, yeah. so was I, was I stupid for going, you know, going with that? I don't think so. And then the Boston bombing happens, and then they're locking down cities and going door to door, ordering people out of their homes at gunpoint, treating everyone like a criminal. When they're going after one 19-year-old boy who ended up being unarmed, they tried to shoot up the boat to kill him, and when they didn't do that, you know, they cut his throat open so he couldn't talk. And I mean, it's just disgusting all the way around. And you know, the guy hasn't even had a trial yet. Let's get him in there, at least give him a trial, before we put him on the, the cover of Rolling Stone magazine calling him the bomber. Because we do not have any proof that he dropped that bag and that that bag was the one that blew up. There's no proof at this point. The FBI hasn't shown us anything. Yep, and uh, anytime the FBI or the CIA is involved like they are in the affairs of these these kids and their parents and whatnot, man, it's always shady. You know, it's always something. Yeah. And then you got... You and, know, and, and that one uh, Judge Napolitano piece that you put in there, uh, the part that you didn't put in, but I've seen that whole piece, he talks about 14 different... Uh, supposed bombing plots that were going to happen, but they all had either an FBI informant or an FBI agent undercover goading right. these people into this. And then going, up, oh, look, we stopped it. We knew exactly what was going to happen. And, and we, well, we were getting the bomb for the guy and we were getting the van for the guy. And, you know, we kept telling him he needed to do this and he didn't want to. And then we got money to do it. And, and, and then he decided, well, maybe I should do this. You guys are all telling me it's good. 
And it, it's just incredible that people don't see that and go, put one and one together. Now the FBI is going around telling people that, um, you know, that they know who the bombers are. And, and, but they've been investigating these guys for two years. It, it's totally disgusting. And one more thing I want to add. Um, one, one thing that really caught my eye, we're looking for clips for the Obama deception too. And I had not come across this one yet where, where you have the clip and he says, I got two words for you. Predator drones. <laughs> You're not going to see it coming. This man laughs about killing children. He laughs about it. Under his administration, they have killed more innocent people with drones than Bush ever did with the drone program. And people yeah, don't do even you, think about that. What do you expect from a gangster, though, you know? He's a exactly. Chicago thug. Yeah. And, and these are the kinds of people that absolutely love, absolutely love to have the most possible power at their disposal and if it comes to the military industrial complex man forget about it you know obama loves this stuff man that's why he you don't you don't joke about predator drones like they've they've bombed weddings yeah. they've bombed entire villages uh, in yemen and pakistan they're they're killing dozens of kids and women children innocent people they're saying that you know if you're 18 to 25 years old or whatever, you're military age and you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, we're going to consider, consider you that you're, you're Al-Qaeda and we're going we're to drop a missile on you. Or if you're collecting you know, firewood and you're 10 years old, we're going to drop a missile on you. You know, it's crazy what they do and what they think they can get away with. And it truly is disgusting that they do this in our name with our money. So, hey, Mike, this is a great uh, talk here. I'm glad we could get you on. I hope people go out and check out your video, A Healthy Distrust. You can see it at Infowars.com forward slash r or forward slash p i'm sorry forward slash p or forward slash paul revere and it was great having you on and best of luck to you hope you keep making films because you really do have a lot of talent in this editing area definitely you really are able to weave a story together that not not a lot of people have that ability they can put clips together and stuff but they don't make it look and flow as seamlessly as you did so my hat's off to you and i'm an editor i Spent many hours in there, and it's great to see other great editing work uh, being done out there, especially in the name of freedom. Great. Thanks a lot, Rob. All right. Well, you have a good one. All right. That was Mike Ademski. His film you can see at Infowars.com forward slash P is A Healthy Distrust, and his channel there is Liberty Luncheon. You can go to YouTube.com forward slash, I guess, Liberty Luncheon to check out his other videos. Really talented filmmaker, and, you know, he's not a guy that dedicates his life to doing video. He just... Watched some TV, got a, got a program, went out and bought a camera with a buddy, and just started shooting. And that's all it takes. And grabbing clips off YouTube. That's always another uh, great thing is to grab those clips off YouTube. There's that evil witch, Feinstein, who wants your guns. Turn them in, Mr. and Mrs. America. And uh, we're going to go to break. We'll come back, and we're going to have another filmmaker on. Um, I was actually kudoing his film a few weeks ago, Micah Ellers. And uh, we're going to have him on to talk about his film. It's the one with the crazy hamster wheel that everybody's caught in. Um, you know, it's a hamster wheel that you're caught in right now. Working that, you know, nine to five day job, trying to pay off the school loans or even trying to get through school or trying to raise a family, doing those things and, and just wondering why you can't ever get ahead. Systems designed that way. Before we go to break, though, I do want to give a quick plug out to State of Mind. It is still available. You can get your copy at Infowars.com. Uh, forward or infowarsstore.com and it's the psychology of control we got it in blu-ray and in regular dvd um, you can get them now we're the exclusive provider of it and last night we actually premiered it with uh, cut-ins of the cast and crew the director the editor the one of the head writers the producer sitting here at this table with alex talking about the different aspects of the film and we put it out last night, actually, also on YouTube. So you can even go watch it on YouTube. But we do appreciate it when you do buy it from the InfoWars store. It supports what we're doing. It supports the, the filmmakers who put their time and effort into this. You know, on the release date, they put it out for free. Who does that? And I thought it was great. I was looking at the comments this morning. A lot of people were just like, thanks, Alex. Thanks for putting this out for free. We really appreciate it. And there's actually some people who were complaining that we're putting out a film for free. I, I really don't understand that. But... You know, I guess you can't please anybody. Hey, we're going to give you a free film on opening day. Here it is. And people <laughs> were, were making comments about it. Totally crazy. Um, but hey, get your copy. You can still get it. Support the filmmakers. You take it and make copies and pass them out to people that you know. You hold screenings in your neighborhood. Let's wake some people up so they know what's going on in their lives, how they're being controlled. A lot of people don't realize this. A lot of people don't realize the players who are behind this. This is old technology that they're using on us today and still using it 
you know, they'll be using it in the future to control the next generation. They do it through the educational system. They do it through TV. They do it through the other print medias. You know, it's, order, it's all in order to make you feel inadequate, so you just do what they say because you're, at that point, you become a mind-controlled, brainwashed zombie slave. So we'll be right back with Micah Ellers, another filmmaker in the Paul Revere contest, and you can find out more about these videos and even vote and watch them at Infowars.com forward slash P, and we'll be right back after this quick break. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show. Johnny Appleseed was born during the Revolutionary War. He's not just a legend. And in more than five states, he introduced apples that had not even been grown in the colonies. Later, the seeds from plants he planted and cultivated and some of the varieties he developed spread across the United States. And it was Johnny Appleseed teaching the colonists and then the new Americans after we won independence the love of planting fruit trees that introduced that idea to North America. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a revolutionary act to unplug from the television, to unplug from the computer and all the globalist propaganda and to go out in your backyard or your front yard or planters at your apartment or on the roof of the building where you live and to plant a garden. Become the Johnny Appleseed of your community with seeds from the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsStore.com. The simple act of planting fruits and vegetables and then tending them and taking care of them and then sharing them with friends and family is a revolutionary act against tyranny. The globalists, first and foremost, do not want us to be self-sufficient. The crony anti-free market capitalist, the fascist, are using socialism and collectivism to shut down societies. Stalin in Poland and in Ukraine and other areas starved on record more than 10 million people over five years by not letting them grow their own crops and collectivizing them. Mao killed between 65 million and 80 plus million people doing this same thing. The UN says they will use food as a weapon. They use genetic evil to attack the earth and major GMO companies have been caught going into growth belts around the world, even where GMO is illegal, and planting seeds everywhere to infect the genetics of the original crops. Almost all of the thousands of varieties of Mexican corn has been infected. They are in a genetic war against everyone. That's why we have to get these seeds and not just plant them on our own gardens and not just give them as gifts to friends and family to plant spring and summer and fall gardens. I'm calling on you to go out into the green belts, to go out into the areas and plant secret gardens. No, not of marijuana, but of the hundreds and hundreds of incredible high quality uh, vegetables and herbs and fruit plants that are here. Lemons and oranges, the list goes on and on. They will grow, uh, plum trees, grape trees, they will grow almost everywhere in the U.S. We can literally, not just buy in these products from InfoWarsStore.com, but from wherever you get them. This aggressive program literally just came to me one morning when I woke up about 4 a.m. realizing that we've got to counter their genetic war against us with original real crops developed over eons on this planet. We have the lowest prices we bought it in the biggest bulk that some of these companies have ever seen to ship this directly to you from the InfoWars Command Center. We stand for life. We stand for liberty. We stand for self-sufficiency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com, click on the Seed Center, and as of taping this, we have the seven top respected brands. We intend to continue to do research and find other companies, other specialties, other varieties to really take action. The InfoWars Store Seed Center has the largest online selection of heirloom, non-GMO seeds. Check out these products from our newest supplier, Heirloom Organics. The Medicine Garden for a natural remedy. The Tea Garden that contains every important tea herb you can grow. Fruit lovers with 12 varieties. And the Tobacco Pack, additive and pesticide free. Join the gardening revolution today at InfoWarsStore.com. This is a revolutionary action we're asking you to take. 
plant seeds everywhere today. Nurture them, bring them to fruit, and pass on the knowledge to others. Become human again. Discover your roots in the soil. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. Welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Rob Dew. We're going to talk to a second filmmaker here in a second who uh, put a release in for the InfoWars.com forward slash Paul Revere contest. You can find all the videos up there. Uh, not, not the entire list, but about 300 of, of, of the ones that we thought um, made it into that first kind of um, categorical round of just really good, solid films. Uh, InfoWars.com forward slash Paul has those there. We will have a full list on Planet InfoWars coming up, and there will be a link to that site there. We're getting those together. There really were a ton of films. People sent them in. <laughs> and we're not, what we're trying to do now is go through and figure out which ones were double submissions, because we had some people submit their film twice. Um, some people submitted three or four times. Some people submitted multi-films. So we've got to make sure we got one of each in there and ready to go in that big composite list of all of them. But with that, we're going to go to this next one. It is called Statomasochist and the Wheel. And we're going to watch just maybe a, a couple minutes of it, and then we're going to have the director, Micah Ellers, on with us. So let's check it out. This one's going to blow your mind, I think. Time to be even more productive. And where's my boy's salutation? Good morning. Mm -hmm. I love you. Oh, that's, that's my boy. handsome boy. I've noticed you haven't really been eating or drinking much lately. Don't you want to grow up big and strong, like your neighbors? How else are you going to get your fluoride and additives? I'm worried about your health. Everyone should eat extra, extra healthy today because the Horn Queen Harlot is planning another attack. We thought we had her finished off, but as you can see, we are all still breathing the smoke from the burning remnants of her arson. She would destroy us all if she could. She hates us for our freedoms. We must all give everything we have before we no longer have the privilege to. We will do everything we can to keep the momentum going because we love you and everyone will be remembered for their efforts when we live in a better time. So, Paul, what is bothering you exactly? I had another nightmare. This one was more, more clear than the last. Oh, I see. Oh, no, please. Go ahead. I dreamed that the Horn Queen was being beaten to death. That's a good dream. And a wet one for me. She was young and innocent and her torch didn't burn fires, but it but it gave light and I wanted to help her. Hmm. Sounds like you might be developing a delusion. Be careful thinking that way. I feel like I just need to rest. I need, I need to rest and think for myself. Rest? 
don't be absurd. Then others won't be able to eat or drink. We're all sharing the burden here. Besides, you know what happens the moment you try and stop walking. It's just a fact of life. The wheel must keep turning, Paul. I feel like something's wrong. Something's... Even with the, the food and the, and the water, everything's... Everything's so disappointing in a weird way. You're becoming anxious and depressed. You just need an SSRI. It's like something's wrong, even with those, I... Even worse, a paranoid delusion. You need several SSRIs. What's happening, God? What's wrong with me? And that was an excerpt of State O Masochist and the Wheel. And it was done by Micah Ellers. And we now have him live via Skype here in the InfoWars Central Command Center Studios for Nightly News. Micah, how are you doing today? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. How are you? Great. How are you? I'm doing great, and it was, it was really cool watching your film. I think it's got a lot of intense imagery in it. Reminds me of, of a cross kind of between Brazil and Time Bandits. Um, you know, two, two pretty powerful Terry Gilliam picks. That, especially Time Bandits, is seared into my, my brain as a kid watching it on HBO over and over and over again. But just that good versus evil battle that's going on, and it's always, you know, one individual that just kind of stands up and says, wait a minute, this isn't right. You know, why am I going along with all this stuff going on? So what was your impetus behind this? How'd you get started? How'd you recruit all the people to be in it? Um, just tell us your, uh, you know, your trials and tribulations. Sure. Well, what you just said about Terry Gilliam was kind of the reason I did it. I think about four or five weeks into the contest, I was listening to your radio broadcast, and Alex came on and said something about... He was really looking for like the next Terry Gilliam type filmmaker or somebody that can make like a theatrical type movie that would be like a Brazil. And I, I think he's talking to me. <laughs> and uh, so I decided to cancel a bunch of projects and I do devoted I gaining seven weeks or so that was left uh, to getting that done, which we barely did. And I think we made about seven minutes or something crazy like that. Um, so yeah, the Terry Gilliam was a big part part of it, at least when he uh, mentioned that. And I know he had mentioned Ridley Scott and uh, Stanley Kubrick being favorites of his before, and the need for someone to make like more entertainment type uh, or th powerful theatrical film, um, so, uh, promoting the you know, liber libertarian type view. And um, so I thought, I got to take a shot at this. I, I want to do this anyway. So, and then the crew, um, I use so many different crews because I do commercial uh, film production direction um, anyway, so I kind of uh, just networked around. I used one of the universities for a couple interns too, and just did everything we could to get a, a volunteer crew for most of it. What was was the lady um, in the TV excited. the uh, the overseer who was on the TV? Was she uh, an actress or was she just somebody you found that you thought would fit the part? I think she did a great job, by the way. She was perfectly uh, uh, stato masochist, as you as you put it. That was actually me. What? Yeah, that was me. <laughs> Put that picture up again. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. I just yeah. got my I had a wig on. Yeah, that was totally me. I thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I never tell anyone. Wow. That, but yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> well, you got the mannerisms down pat of, of the the <laughs> government bureaucrat minder who who yeah. is just totally nitpicking everything and oh you're. You're not thinking clearly. Here's a pill. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant job. You, you deserve an Academy Award for that. <laughs> Thank you. I, I was in any state I guess I was going for, so. Yeah. No, well, that, she definitely fulfilled the role, and, and now we know that, that she was a he. That, I think that's what made it more, as I'm sitting there watching that, I'm like, wow, that is just a, an evil person up there. Just See, I, <laughs> yeah, well, I I thought it would make her. I was like, what's the uncanny valley that's going to make people feel there's something really off about this character? And I was like, I'll make it a guy. You know, and then that kind of gives it like a, a unisex, you know, like, because I feel like that's how it always is, right? It's always this more generic, more generic versionity or something, right? So I felt like that was, and that's why the color, the face changes colors. Mm hmm Yeah, and you have that, that effect in the background, that 80s type of... Uh... <laughs> 
yeah. of uh, repeating effect going on back there, and mm. and in then the, in the skin on her. Huh? Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Go uh, well. I, and uh, another thing, we're watching some clips of it now. I like the hands that are there to help you. You got the right hand and the left hand, each helping you. That's a great metaphor. Um, did did that? Did, was that something you shot practical and just? Yes. Okay, yes. so you just put the the actresses in black tights or something, or how did that work? What? Well, well, actually, they were wearing. Um, Groots um, entirely, and we built um, cables in a shoulder piece, and then I had to uh, paint them all out in post. Like their whole bodies in on all the shots, be completely removed uh, in post. Oh wow! Okay, so it took you a lot of post production then to get this, get these shots. <sighs> it was a nightmare. We, yeah, I was like, it was like uh, me, uh, uh, myself, and another assistant for the compositing. We spent 37 hours straight without sleeping just to get it in on time with the deadline. You know, we had to cut. Had a lot of corners to make that deadline, but I, I didn't want the story to suffer, you know. Right. right. Well, and yeah. it doesn't. At the end of this, you know, I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but <laughs> but Paul is his name, right? Paul, which I guess is Paul. Yeah. Paul, Paul, Paul Revere. Paul. Uh -huh. uh, you know, he does have an awakening. You know, he, he realizes something is wrong, and he refuses to comply with the the wheel that he has placed in the you know the great hamster right. wheel. Right. Yeah. So, but you start off with a really intense piece of imagery that <laughs> that uh, elephant donkey. Uh, dressed in uh -huh. the S and M gear, whipping uh -huh. um, Lady Liberty, who's got you know uh, credit cards mm -hmm. to her. She's bound and gagged, mm -hmm. and I mean, yep. really intense imagery there with the drones in the background, and uh, it just uh, you know that's almost like a, a cutaway from uh, Lord of the Rings if it was, <laughs> if it was done Whoa. with uh, in bondage. <laughs> You know, yeah. Good stuff, though. You know the slow motion whip. All, all the you really have the the craft down, and and you could really tell that you had um, experience in doing this stuff. This wasn't your first rodeo putting something together. Uh, so I'm not surprised that you're doing commercials for a living and and you know making a living off doing film. Thanks. Yeah, I try. Uh, I wanted to be a science fiction filmmaker, and um, you know, I, I, so I learned how to do all that stuff, uh, studio-based effects. I like, I like in-camera effects. Everything in the film, there's no CGI. It's all practical. Um, I really like that. And I like with digital compositing technology, you can really do a lot, kind of take off where film left off in the maybe early 90s or something like that, late 80s. Uh, right. And you've yeah. got, it looks like uh, some stills behind you, um, some, some uh, slides that you made of the, some concept art for, the, for, the, for your oh. film. Oh, oh, in the room. Yeah, 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 right behind uh, you. This is, yeah, there's concept art for the, you know, the statomasochist and the kills. And so we had to design everything first because, like, the, the, um, the creature was a whole, whole creature suit in a silicone. It was pretty expensive and time consuming. Uh, uh, DMS mascot, Dale Morton, did that from a local. He does special effects and mascot stuff. But we had to design it all. Like, that's Lady Liberty you can see down there. And, uh, um, there's the scene with uh, the Trollatron character, so, you know, kind of started there conceptualizing everything. I kind of spent, like, days just uh, writing a script, and then uh, myself and another artist began conceptualizing it and uh, just went full full bore, like, full-time from then on, you know, to get it done. Yeah, well, it's got a lot of very yeah. unique imagery. Not, you know, of yours, I think, yeah. is the most probably original of what we got in. You know, a lot of people did really great, great jobs on editing, pulling in different yep. elements and stuff, but yours really had a look to it that nobody else, I think, even came close to in terms of, of just like its own original look. When, you're, when you put them all together, yours just kind of you know, stands out. There's some other great ones too, that, but yours is just a fully encompassing into another world that does not exist, but it does <laughs> if, you, yeah. if yeah. you look at things in, in a, a different light, if you just change the way the, the prism is you know you just look at things just a little bit differently it's like wait a minute we are all walking in a hamster wheel why are we all doing this and you know, why do we look at the right hand and left hand why you know one's got this one's got that it's but it's two fl two mm -hmm. flavors of poison you know one just tastes sweet and one tastes sour so which, which one do we want at this time so um how right. long did it take you to write the whole piece out did you just take that from that seven week time frame just yeah yeah actually see the thing is i uh I was busy at first and I wasn't going to do the contest and put myself out of it. And then when Alex said that thing, I immediately was like, you know what, tomorrow you're going to clear the schedule. You're going to sit down ouch, all day. And I just thought, what could I, I, I mean, it was totally from scratch there. I was like, what? He said he wanted some 
with him, Terry Gilly, and I'd like to do something like that. So I was like, what can I create that'll be like this political allegorical world, you know? Um, and so I, I started writing concepts down and, and just um, refined as much as I could. In the script, I mean, you know, sadly, I wrote two drafts. So the first draft, I sat down and the second second day I spent the whole day writing the script and then I didn't touch the script again because of time. I was so concerned with all the time I and mean, when we had to build the set, gerbil wheel, everything had to be made, the characters, everything. Um, so I, I did a final rewrite. We, I got up at like 4.30 in the morning the day before we shot the first day of photography and I, um, I wrote the script entirely there and changed it even more and so, you know, it was the best I could do in like just a couple of days of, of writing on it but um, I think the con concepts came and I wanted to just create that world and so I feel like you know it was fairly successful maybe in that way you know given the budget and all those kind of things right exactly and you're not in a uh, production hotbed or what is known as a production hotbed you're not in New York you're not in LA you're not in Austin uh, tell people where you're at you know so I, and I want people to know that because yeah. <laughs> you could do this anywhere you don't have to be surrounded by all the glitz and glamour of you know the production world where tell everybody where you're located yeah, well, I'm basically in Charleston, West Virginia. So I'm in like the filming pit of the country. I mean, there's like, this is the worst place you could probably be for this type of industry. So yeah, if you can succeed here, I'm, anyone with the resources and connections and infrastructure anywhere else, uh, you know, what's their excuse? Exactly. Right. And, and, and we were talking earlier as well, when, I, when you told me you were from West Virginia, I said, oh, well, you know, have you heard anything about this, this uh, Boy Scout Jamboree and all the emergency exercises that are going on? And then you had an interesting story. You were actually had a, had a job working with these people at one point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I've worked with them before, but for different uh, reasons. I've shot stuff for the merchandising part of the Boy Scouts and licensing, but, uh, you know, little projects. But the... Um, the the, the thing was somebody called me to be a camera operator and uh, shoot, um, you know, just live, live coverage, I guess, and the commercial coverage or whatever of the Jamboree. And then um, luckily that canceled. So now I'm kind of creeped out because the whole, you know, Internet, uh, uh, the, what was it, the Facebook or something in Beckley that his article about that this morning with the, the scares about the drills. And then I read all that and I was like, right. well, I'm really glad that... that yeah, there's they there's a uh, you know there's a an, an order from the governor where he declared a state of emergency. Um, there's different exercises going on in the air. I think four different um, emergency management systems yeah. are operating there during this time. And they were going around to the restaurants in the local area saying, if you have four or more people complaining, or it's either four or five or more people complaining about rashes or vomiting, contact us immediately. I mean, that on itself, oh is, that's God. just odd. That is just very odd that that well, kind of information would be coming out. Well, I can tell you they have, um, there's black helicopters flying around today, and army helicopters. There's all kinds of, this morning, there were probably, I don't know, 10 or 12 C-130s go up. I mean, I know they're doing drills in the report, too. It said, I live, I live right, I like a mile from the airport, so, or two miles or something. And that, so all day, it's just been, um, you know, a uh, National Guard uh, uh, display of, uh, of all kinds of craft, and so some, something's going on. Yeah, and you know, the Boy Scouts working with the National Guard is nothing new. In 2010, I was in Chicago, and all the local Boy Scout troops were pulled into this exercise that was being held in a uh, cordoned off section near uh, one of the airports, and you know, they had Polish troops in there working with these guys, even though the Polish troops were supposed to be just observing, and I even got that a quote uh, from a high up Chicago emergency uh, management uh, official. He said, nope, nope, they're just there observing. Well, I've got footage of them holding guns, directing people around in this mock terrorist exercise where there's a chemical agent spread out with hostages. And the funny thing is, is, is when the uh, troops bust in, they kill the two terrorists with their guns, and then they tell everybody to lie down in the powder that was spread out, which was the biological agent, instead of moving them away. And they treated them like prisoners at that point. Then they're uh, run over to a decontamination area. They've got this powder on them. They have to get scrubbed down. But they were using the Boy Scouts in this capacity. And I think this is a group that they do turn to every once in a while to fulfill these things. We see um, other agencies working with the Boy Scouts. The New York Times is reporting that Homeland Security is working with the Boy Scouts, teaching them how to go take out um, veterans or drug dealers and stuff like that and they show the Boy Scouts with guns you know running around um, buses and, and going through doors doorways and, and conducting these exercises so they are kind of grooming these young men who 
and you know, I was a Boy Scout. We were told, you know, you dedicate yourself to service. You know, you're dedicating yourself to your community to make it a better place. You're prepared. You have all these things under control. You know how to do certain skills so you can be an asset in your community, not a liability. And what they're doing is taking that type of goodwill and that type of you know, trustworthiness, loyalty, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, friendly, brave, clean, and reverent. I think I almost got it all right there. The uh, Boy Scout motto, or the not the motto, but the one of the things. Anyway, I've been out of uh, out of it for a while. But those type of uh, philosophies, and they're directing it towards turning it into the police state. They're directing them into that that crowd because they know these guys are trustworthy in their in their abilities, and that by getting them early enough, you know, when these guys are going into a career, they're going, well, what do I want to be? Well, you know, I had a great time on all those exercises with the National Guard and the Coast Guard and the Army. I'm going to go do that. I'm going to go help people out. And they, these are those Dudley Do-Rights out there that really think they are helping out when, you know, they're, they're digging in people's cars or digging in their pants or doing mm -hmm. blood draws. They really are getting them young, mm -hmm. and that's what Hitler said to do, get the kids when they're young. So we really are fulfilling that by, by you know, having the Boy Scouts participate in these programs. Yeah, well, they have to be uh, good at what they do, you know, in order to succeed up through the progression of that. So they be, it's for anyone to want them to work for them, you know, so it makes sense. I mean, you know, um, they, 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 like you said, all the, all the attributes, uh, I, I don't think I can name them off as quickly as you did, but... Um, <laughs> Those I think I great, got a few wrong, you know, too. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> will put a comment, you, you got them wrong, it's this. Somebody will post it. But, uh, yeah, right, right. You know, hey, any, any, anything else you want to add on your film? Um, any final thoughts, why you put it together, what you hope people get out of it when they're watching it? Yeah, sure. Um, the thing I hope people get, if anything, is just that um, the concept itself, I think, applies in so many different ways that, you, you know, we, we're, we wake up in that system and um, we don't question it when we don't question it. Uh, life continues on exactly as it's planned for us. But, um, if you'll notice that, you know, it's not actually even an act of violence in the film. To it's 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 an act of uh, secession in your mind or in your will in your action. You you realize that, that what you're doing is contributing in the way that he sees the bigger picture, you know, in the film, and um, how it's connected to the the to the very thing that you're you're taught to fear. And so once you realize you're kind of all we all participate in our own participate in that mentally, physically. So the, the, the way to be free of the farm is to see the farm, really. And, and when you see that in the mind, like through the propaganda and, and through the culture that we're, you know, we all get brainwashed to comply a certain way. Um, once, we, once we look and see the picture, we can then see, oh, all I have to do is, is stop participating in this. And I think that that's really the solution. At least all the beast lost its power. So, you know, I think that... Um, once one one cable of power at the time at a time, you know, as we as we all get off and it'll, uh, you know, and I'm not saying that like you get off the grid. I mean, of course, you can do that. And that's exactly a, a, a perfect example in, in a, you know, a very physical way. But um, even mentally, you know, um, the belief systems, the left and right hand and, you know, in thought and, and that the entire paradigm of uh, having someone else finish your thoughts for you and protect you, so on and so forth. Um, the pharmaceutical the, drugging, the, freedom comes out of the fluoride yeah, in the water, yeah. all that stuff. It, just, yeah. it, all, it all combines to creating the individual who can be controlled. And that's what they want. They want individuals that can be controlled, that do what they say, that pay their taxes, that don't question. They just want people to run on that hamster wheel and keep it turning because by us turning that hamster wheel, it lets them sit around and do nothing but lord over us. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's just we have a neo-feudalism, you know, instead of us being in the fields, we're in that hamster wheel. It's just, you know, it's different, but it's the same thing, and it all works in the same way. So if people get that, that's great. There's other little, you know, subtle things in the film, too, but I, I don't want to give a lot of those away. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I hopefully, my main purpose in making it, though, is I want to make a feature film, and I'd like to do something like this that could be, you know, maybe theatrically released that would be entertaining to people, because I feel like if you take the abstraction of it uh, like this film you know it's an abstraction and if you and if you can do that you can show people how it all works like um i think i think when you stick to the truth and when you stick to what's morally right the truth is on your side so all you have to do is is kind of generically show where people are missing the truth in their life you know missing uh, the facts and um uh, i'd like to do that with a film you know filmmaking and i kind of like to make kind of you know kubrick uh uh, Ridley Scott, Terry Gilliam type, uh, maybe, you know, films of this nature or, 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 
or more complicated, but hopefully with a lot bigger budget. Right, right. Well, you're, I think you're well on your way, and if people go check out your site, you even have some other special effects stuff that you've done, which I think is really impressive. It's stuff oh, that I, you know, I, I mainly spend my time shooting Alex on video and adding uh, articles and imagery over top of it. We don't spend a lot of time doing, you know, special effects heavy stuff. Every once in a while we do, but, but you know, it's a, it's a rarity. It's the exception more than the rule because we're just concentrating on putting out information that people can see, that people can share with their friends. But you did it in a way that I really think is going to wake people up in another way, too. And it's going to get those people who might not... Uh, you know, otherwise be susceptible to an Alex Jones type message, but they see something crazy on the internet and they're like, I'm going to watch this, and then they pass it around to their friends, and it's, you know, it's this, wow, what, you know, and they start talking about it. Hey, we, you know, we're the guys, my, my dad's the one working on the hamster wheel, he's the, you know, and then my mom's a minder, she's always telling people what to do, you know, and then they start seeing the real life examples yeah. that you had in, in your piece. So with that, we're, we're going to say goodbye, mm -hmm. but we, uh, good luck, uh, Monday we're going to announce the finalists. Sure. It'll be about 20, 30, 40, okay. I'm not sure the exact number. And then, um, you know, in the next coming weeks, leading up to the end of July, we're going to do the third place, second place, and, uh, and grand prize winner. So good luck with that. I'm not involved in all those processes. Uh, I've looked through some films. I've given my two cents. But there's way too many pieces for me to judge. I think Alex is going to be the final judge on this. And he's, he's um, you know, looking to us to kind of round out a, a giant list of things that he could look at and then pick the winner. But best of luck to you. And even if you don't win, you know, you've won by educating people and by putting out, you know, a really cool piece that, that is going to live in infamy on InfoWars forever. So. Well, thank you so much, Rob. Nice talking with you. All right. Well, you have a good day. And that was Micah Ellers, who put together the production State of Masochist and the Wheel. Uh, I really think a very original, very imaginative production, and I had no idea he was the minder lady in there. That totally threw me for a loop. That was, uh, did you guys know that? I, was, I mean, that was, I was like, well, she's a good actress. You know, she really knows what's going on, and she's got the, the uh, feeling down. Like, she's been thinking about this stuff forever, the way... Very THX 1138, the way, you know, she's being the minder in that piece. And uh, kind of a cross between that and then one of, the, one of those uh, close-up shots that you see in a Terry Gilliam film of somebody really pu putting their schnoz right into the camera telling you, you're not doing it right, it's this way, you know. But he really had, had he distilled that um, experience down, I, and I, I think it's a great film. I was glad to talk to him. So you can find these and many more on Infowars.com forward slash Paul is where we have, you know, a lot of the entries. This is not by any means all of the entries. And we had a lot of great entries. And if, if yours didn't make it on here, we are going to put a full list together on Prison Planet TV. We're starting to do that right now because we do want everybody to see these. And there will be a link off of uh, Infowars.com forward slash Paul for this. Um, and that doesn't mean you didn't make a good film, and it doesn't mean that wasn't worth anything. We had to do a limited number of films and choices just because of the time constraints. We are, in addition to doing this contest, putting out news every day, working on special reports. We're working on a documentary right now. I should be in the other room actually looking at interviews and, and transcribing them, and, but I'm, I'm here doing this because this is also my job, is, is to get the news out to everybody, especially our members at Prison Planet TV, we do appreciate your support, and if you are watching this on YouTube, please consider becoming a member of PrisonPlanet.tv. It's very easy to do. Uh, you get the daily show, the nightly news, all the movies. Which one of the movies? Click on the movie section real quick. Let's go to that. And um, we have the newest film up there, State of Mind, which is the entire film plus the extras. And also in between that, we have um, the, a roundtable group with the director, the editor, the head writer, Richard Grove, one of the producers, and Alex sitting around talking about different aspects of the film. Very educational, and it almost makes the film that much better. It's like a, sort of a commentary track, but it's broken up in between segments of the film. And with that being said, get your copy on DVD or Blu-ray at InfoWarsStore.com or InfoWarsShop.com. You can get that there. Support the filmmakers. Support us. It helps us to put on things like that. So when we release it on opening day, we put it out for free on YouTube. We think that's how it should be done because it's not about making a bunch of money. It is about getting information out to people. And this film, let me tell you, I sat in there with Marcos last night and we watched the premiere with everybody else. We even had some caramel popcorn. And we, you know, because I never sat down and watched the whole thing. Let me tell you, 
It is a true masterpiece. These guys really put it together, especially coming off their, their last film, um, A Noble Lie, Oklahoma City bombing that, that took place in the 90s. You know, a lot of people might not even know about that. That's another great film that they have. But State of Mind, this is a great second hit for these guys, a second home run. Get your copy today, make copies, pass them out to other people, have screenings in your area. Um, get it. Get your local movie theater to play it. Rent it out one night. Sell tickets. You might even be able to make a little uh, cash off this. Sell some copies. You know, do. You know, get out there and get the word out because it's not the quality of the steps that we take that matters. It's the amount of steps that we take. That's how we're going to change things. Not everything we do is going to be perfect out there, but we have to start doing something. And so I'm doing my something. You get out there and do your something and and help pick up the, the rope and pull this giant wagon of freedom and, and liberty and that message that we have and that we want to give out to people. Let's get it out there. Let's do it. Let's start making some changes. So we had two great filmmakers tonight, one a very solid documentary and one a kind of an ethereal concept piece, but two both great films. And we have a lot of other great films that you can check out at Infowars.com forward slash Paul. A lot of great stuff. I mean, we're going to be releasing articles on this. We have enough stuff to cover for the next, I think, year. We could be having filmmakers on talking about their stuff. Even if you didn't win, you won by participating and by joining in and by you know, being a, another soldier in the info war, creating your piece of information that's going to live out there on that website for a long time to come. And with that, we will see you tomorrow night. It's the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Rob Dew, and be safe out there. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at InfoWars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at InfoWars.com slash show.